Hello, yeah, ten. This is the second lesson on conditional probability. Um, it's referring to pages 436 and 437 on Caboodle. Um, we'll go through the textbook example first. Um, so we're told um, in the first example that um, we have a series of long jump competitions. Athletes have to jump at least 6.5 meters to qualify in for the next round of jumps. Um, and in the book, they've let Q be the set of athletes qualifying for the extra jumps. Um, and then we've got the set S, which is the athletes jumping over seven meters. So first of all, we need to see that S is uh, contained in Q. Um, and we say that S is a subset of Q. In this case, since all athletes who jump over seven meters qualify for the extra jumps. Um, so we've got 70% of athletes qualify for the extra jumps, which means 30% don't. 50% uh, of all the athletes jump 7 meters, so therefore they belong to set S. So the remaining 20% must have come from the set Q, which is outside of S. So those 20% uh, of athletes have jumped over 6.5 meters, um, at least 6.5 meters, and qualified, but less than 7 meters. So using this, we can now work out some uh, probabilities. Um, so here we ask, given that a person is qualified, what's the probability that they have, uh, they belong to set S? So they make seven meter jumps. So we want the probability of S given Q. So that's the intersection divided by Q. So given that they've qualified, so from this set, the probability that they belong to this set is 0.5 out of 0.7, which simplifies to 5 sevenths. Second example. So we've got um, drivers either wear seat belts or not. So 95% of drivers wear seat belts, 5% don't. Um, then we can then have drivers uh, involved in serious accidents, they either die or they don't die. So that's the outcome of the accident. So we're told 60% um, of drivers involved in serious accidents die if they're not wearing a seatbelt. So if they're not wearing a seatbelt, 60% of this set, uh, of this um, die. Therefore, 40% don't. Likewise, we can do the top. Um, and then we've now got a um, uh, second question where we asked to do uh, find the probability that uh, a person, a driver who is involved in serious accidents, so within the whole set, so the whole um, sample space, that they didn't wear a seatbelt and survived. So we want that there. So they didn't wear a seatbelt and survived. So we want the property of N multiplied by the property of S given uh, n. Um, part C. So what's the problem that a driver who died in a serious accident was not wearing a seatbelt? So we've got some conditioning going on here because, uh, with the phrase who died. So we look at the driver who died, those drivers who died in the accident. So we're looking at this bit and this bit. And within that, what's the problem that they're not wearing a seatbelt? So we're going to use the formula, probability not wearing a seatbelt, given died, okay, so is the intersection divided by the probability that they not, they've died. So we're conditioning on the fact that they've died. So if we work through that, so n intersect d is 0.03, so the probability of d is going to be uh, this plus this next. Um, therefore, that simplifies to 3 over 22. 
or 13.6 as required uh, to one decimal place as a percentage. So here's another example, just to get our heads around it. So in this example, we've got, uh, I've made up, we've got uh, a gym who's color sized people in three categories. A, B, C, 6% of uh, people are in category A, 25B, 15C. Then we've got 10% of people in set A pay for personal training. So 10% of this pay for training, 90% don't. And in that way, we can fill the uh, tree dagger. So we're told, um, what's the property? We asked, what's the property that a user chosen at random will pay for a personal trainer? So those personal trainers will come from A and Y, B and Y, C and Y. Because you're either going to be young and pay for training, middle aged or pay for training, and old or and pay for training, which gives you that. We can conclude then about 12% of its users pay for personal training. And this will be um, crucial uh, for the gym to plan ahead. So find a property that a user who pays for training um, is between the ages of 20 to 50. So again, we've got a conditioning going on here. We're conditioning on the fact that they've, they're going to pay for training. So within the um, that set, what's the likelihood that they will come from the group um, set B? So we want property of B given Y. So we want... What's the property they belong to set B, given that they pay for training? So conditional property formula again. So the intersection B and Y is just this and this. We already worked out the property of they pay for a personal trainer. So which, which gives you uh, about 46% of users who pay for training are middle-aged people in conclusion. Hopefully that's enough for you to work. Uh, go ahead and complete the uh, exercises now. Um, if not, uh, please give us an email. Good luck.